And then lastly is uh, innovation. Now I'm talking to people that are probably, your, your whole business revolves around innovation. And I, I say that when I got the job, uh, Monty should never miss a kick. I heard that around the bra face fires from all these clever guys in South Africa because he gets paid a mass, massive amount of money. You know? And John should never lose a line out. And, uh, and you're right. But there's a, there's, a, there's a lesson that I learned in that, is they're the best in the world, and therefore you've got to treat them like they're the best, and you need to stimulate them all the time. So you need to bring ideas and things in to these players to make sure that they stay the best in the world. And as it was, at the end of the World Cup, eight guys in the, out of the 15 from South Africa, John Smith, the captain of the World 15, all picked by the International Rugby Board, which means that we had eight guys who were the best players in the world at that time. And I say that because we needed to be innovative in how we looked after it. So the first year we had a psychologist in, full-time sports psychologist. Now, it's never been in a sports team. How do you judge a psychologist in a team game? Tennis, golf, easy because the results, it's the impact on one individual. But in a team game, it's very difficult to, ana to an analysis on that. And Henna Kirika came along. It wasn't coincidence that the Sharks and the Bulls played in the final year before, or the same year. It wasn't coincidence we win a World Cup away from home. It was because all the things he had done for four years on getting us to understand of how we react when we're away from home, how we react when we play on different grounds, etc., etc. I'm not going to get into too much detail of that, but I will say to you that the, the psychology was, was a massive part in year one. Year two, I brought in Cheryl Calder to work with the eyes. I mean, Doc Craven probably is going to kill me when I see him when I get up to heaven. Hopefully, I assume I get up to heaven with him. But uh, he's going to kill me because women shouldn't have been allowed in the change room. And that's one of Doc's rules. It was a man's room. And, but I think times have changed. And so Cheryl came in and she worked with eyes. And her, her, her theory was your eyes are muscle. And you train your muscle like you train any other muscle. And when the pressure's on, your eye then has to take over. So for example, example which you'll enjoy. If you're a fat, overweight guy, you eat all the pies and you throw the ball in the lineouts. And John said I could say that. Uh, you, you, then think, you then think that that guy's got good eyes because he's short, fat, and eats a lot of pies. But what I don't understand is that his most important attribute is his eyes, because he's got to understand how to throw the ball in the lineup. So I'll give you an example. Is Victor going backwards? Is Victor coming forwards? Is there a guy in front of him? Does he have to wait? Must he lob it over him? Must he throw it quickly? All those principles are determined by his eyesight. And so therefore, all the drills that he did with Cheryl would have been, not all of them, but predominantly would have been depth perception. The next step would have been Brian Abana and John Deville as interceptive. Why? Because the most important attribute for them was to understand peripheral awareness. So they would be understand where there's a defender, where there's a attacker, where they can intercept. And those skills are directly proportional to the results they got in their computer programs. So when they intercepted, the people said, ah, oh, geez, lucky. That was a skill that they had practiced. Maybe not the interception, but the understanding of space and, and awareness, peripheral awareness. So, I want to just end off by saying those two things. World Cup final, we never lost one line-out, not one. In the most intense game in world rugby, we never lost one line-out, which again proves the point. And the reality was that we, we had no tries scored against us, which means we understood peripheral awareness in terms of defense. So the second year was very important. The third year, we brought the analysis system. And I was listening to Gary talk a little bit about biometrics and saying, you know, verification. And he lost me a bit with a couple of those long words. But what I wanted to say is when you can measure it, you can, you can improve it. And so when we, we had broad analysis system, we could work out who runs, who walks, when they walk, how far they walk, whether they walk, walk further than the opposition player. And we could then work out if you ran quicker and ran more than the opposition guy, then I'd have 15 guys getting to the ball quicker, which means our results would, 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 would improve. And there was, no, there was no fluke that in the years as the results improved, Big Brother was giving them an audit on their performances, which meant that I could actually give them increases in their salaries. So if Os walked, I told him just walk quicker than the guys walking next to you, Os. And if you run stock, just make sure you run for longer periods of time than Richie McCall, because then you're going to get there first. You might not get there first time, second time, third time, but let me tell you, the 48th, 49th, 50th time you'll get there first. And that is the audit that we did. So the analysis system was also an innovative thing. And then lastly, obviously, Eddie Jones in my fourth year. And this is the message that I want to, to stress to business people. In. Every security firm has maybe a 10-point plan or 10 secrets of success. And the scary thing is if you took your 10 and handed it over to the other guy, I can promise you that 9 or 10 of those are exactly the same as the company next door to you. But you all think that that little trade secret you have is the one that makes successful business. And when Eddie joined us, 
He told us where we were losing, why we were losing, how Australia beat us, how they got into Bucky's, how they kicked on Monty, when they... And what I'm saying is he shared what he had done analysis for us as a weakness in our team. That was number one. Number two, he was a, a sounding board for, for me as a coach because he had been to a World Cup. He had lost in a final. He had beaten the All Blacks in the semifinals. So for me, it was crazy that we didn't bring him in and use someone who's been through exactly the same process. He hadn't won it. And in fact, I remember when I phoned him, I said, Eddie, do you want to come and help me with the World Cup? He said, can you turn silver into gold, mate? And I mean, the logical thing now is he won a silver medal in 2003 and a gold medal in 2004. It's not too bad for a, for a guy who's involved in rugby union. So I just wanted to stress that innovation and bringing people from outside and letting them understand where your company is weak is a massive boost for, for you as a group as well. So that was, in a nutshell, the five things that I wanted to stress. Planning, loyalty and experience, luck, leadership, and innovation.